I think you'll be safe by then. So. Okay, we're going to uh, call this meeting to order. It is five o'clock. This is an informational meeting of the uh, Labor Management Committee. As uh, is customary, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did we bring the uh, minutes from the previous one? Where is Sue? Do we have the minutes from the previous meeting, Sue? Did we ever dig them up? Okay. Uh, we don't have the, the minutes from the previous meeting, so we'll skip number two. Um, introduction to committee members. What we have here is uh, I am Mayor Bob Ryan. If we can go around, please use the microphones. My name is Angela Payne. I am the HR and Labor Relations Director. Terry Hansen, Finance Director. I'm Cor Alderman Corey Balk. I'm the chairman of the Salary and Grievance Committee. If you guys can stand up so they can see. Hi, I'm Joanne Decker. I'm president of Local 1564. Scott Nevis, ATU 998. I'm Steve Cobb. I'm president of the Sheboygan Police Pro uh, Supervisors Association. Chase Longmiller, Sheboygan Fire Department. Tom Pitch, president of DPW. Jack Vanderwill, uh, president of the Professionals Union. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, we will now have the election of the chairman and the vice chairman of the committee. Move to nominate uh, Mayor Ryan. Second. We have a nomination of uh, myself for uh, chairman. Do we have any nominations for chairman? Move to nominate Matt Walsh. Second. Nomination for Matt Walsh and a second. Um, Do we do this by ballot or do we do this by show of hands? You can do it by show of hands as long as you record it. Okay. So we have uh, for myself, um, all in favor, say aye by raising your hands. Aye. <laughs> it looks like we have four. Uh, for uh, Matt Walsh. All in favor, say aye by raising your hands. Aye. Congratulations, Matt. Where is Matt? He's not here. the vice chairman. But he ran a great campaign. Oh, so you're going to let me be the vice chairman and run the meeting? Okay. Matt Walsh is the chairman and he's not present. Good job, guys. Now we will have the election of the vice chairman of the committee. Do we have any nominations? We have a nomination and a second for myself. Are there any other nominations? Mm, no, we, yeah. <laughs> move to approve by unanimous. Uh, yeah. Under unanimous consent, congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So I guess I get to run the meeting after all. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, thank you. That's called give and take or something like that, isn't it? All right, good job. Um, opening comments. I, I first of all will read the agenda for this evening. We do have a fairly tight agenda. It is intentionally done so because we figured this could be a, uh, a, a crowded event, which has come true. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. And uh, we, uh, we wanna keep everything under control. This is not meant to be a contentious meeting. This is not meant to be a finger pointing and uh, name calling meeting. This is an, a, an, a meeting that we will gather information. The agenda is as follows from here on out. After my comments, we will have a financial overview for the city by Terry, finance director with input from Dave Lutzke, our city assessor. They will tell you the financial outlook for the city as is today. We will then have a public input session for people that have signed up. 
We have a two minute limit on that. Um, Angela Payne, our HR director, will be keeping track of time. She will, uh, at 15 seconds, notify the speaker that there's 15 seconds and then at time's up. And please, when time is up, please do refrain from speaking any longer. We then have comments and input by older persons and department heads, anybody who would like to speak, that they can stand up and, and give their input as to, uh, as to this uh, situation that we have in the future that, we're, uh, we're, uh, that, that faces us. Then we will have comments by everybody on the committee up here that everybody can stand up and speak and say their piece. I will then have my closing comments and the meeting will adjourn. Like I said, this is not, a content this is not meant to be contentious. This is meant for information gathering. This is meant for public input. Um, this is meant basically to gather information, to gather sentiment that will then be brought to the negotiating table. This is not a negotiation here this night. Um, negotiations, labor negotiations, happen in closed session. They do not happen in a public forum. If they did ever, were, we were ever forced to negotiate in a public forum, absolutely nothing would be accomplished, obviously. So this is not a, negotiated, this is not a, uh, a negotiation tonight. There will be no decisions made tonight. This is an information gathering session once again. The reason for this is to ensure transparency and to let everybody have their say. We want, we want to know the sentiment out there on, on, on both sides of the issue, whether it is labor or whether it is uh, from the, from the uh, city side or the taxpayer side. Also, when people speak, like I said, we, we, we don't want viciousness in the chamber. Um, if people step out of line and they, they cross that line, any member of the up here will be allowed to call point of order so that things do not get out of hand. At that, we will uh, begin with uh, financial overview by Terry Hansen and Dave Lutsky. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for those on the back wall. You have a very tough time seeing that. Better? All right. Um, basically, what this is is to summarize what we're looking at for the 2010 budget for the general fund. And um, to start off is always to remember that the city is just one piece of the pie when it comes to your property taxes. Sheboygan Public Schools comprise 39%. The Sh County of Sheboygan comprises 20. Lakeshore Technical College is six. And then you have the Sheboygan Recreation Department and then also the state of Wisconsin that are at 1% each. And finally, the city of Sheboygan is only 33% of your property taxes. So no matter what the city does on your property taxes, it's impacting a third of it. Um, there's still two thirds out there that, that if people are so inclined, there's other entities that that are also play an impact on your total property taxes. The challenges that we're looking at for 2010, the impacts, in the revenue side, we're looking at levy limitations. We're looking at a limited tax base growth. We're looking at shared revenue cuts, elimination of one-time revenues that we utilized last year, or this year in 2009, and the overall taxpayer ability to pay on the expenditure side, we're looking at salary increases, the Wisconsin Retirement Fund increases that are mandated by a state statute, health insurance cost increases, inflationary factors, tipping fee increases mandated by the state, and the expenditure restraint program that the state has in place. On the general fund revenue side, if we start with the 2009 budgeted revenues for the general fund, we have $36.2 million budgeted. We have one-time revenues in 2009 related to stormwater fees or rev residual stormwater revenues that were transferred into the general fund of 615,000. Those will not be available in 2010. We have a state aid reduction. Most recent estimate as of yesterday, it's $231,381 cut in state shared revenues. 
So our 2010 anticipated revenues, not factoring decreases in service fees um, due to downtime in, in the economy or reduced interest. This is just large, large scope pictures here. Um, we're looking at 35.4 million in approximate revenues. Looking at the expenditures, we have start off with the 2009 budget. We have the Wisconsin Retirement Fund um, proposed state increase of approximately $195,000. Then we have the tipping fee proposed state increase of about $100,000. Our salaries, which average approximately 4.5% when you factor in step increases for, for the union agreements and the standard cost of living adjustment that is typically um, provided, we're looking at about $910,000 increase. We're looking at the Wisconsin retirement and the FICA taxes that are associated with that salary of about 177,000. Our insurance costs, um, we're looking at about 387,000. It says 5% up there, but it, this, that number actually reflects 6%. And then our other operating costs that are non-salary and benefits, we're looking at about a 3% increase, which equates to $167,000. So our 2010 anticipated expenditures total 38 point, almost $38.2 million. When we compare that with the revenues, we can see that we're gonna have a shortfall of approximately $2.8 million uh, that we're looking at for 2010 on just the big ticket items. And looking at the expenditure restraint impact, um, the city receives about $1.1 million in expenditure restraint aid. And what that is, is it's aid provided by the state for the city to comply in an expenditure restraint program. Uh, last year, the expenditure restraints um, were at about 5.7%. This year, uh, as it's proposed, as, because it ties with inflationary factors, we're looking at zero. So if we want to still participate in the expenditure restraint program, we would be, have allowable expenditures of $36.2 million. However, our anticipated expenditures are the 38.2, so we're about $2 million short in that. So even if we had an unlimited stream of revenue in order to receive the, that additional aid from the state, we would have to cut nearly $2 million to, to receive that $1.1 million in aid. Looking at the 2010 budget challenges, the, the short of it all and the summary of it all is our anticipated expenditures will exceed our revenues by nearly 2.8 million and our anticipated expenditures could exceed the expenditure restraint program allowed amount by nearly 1.9 million. And um, looking at the tax base, I'll hand this over to the city assessor, David Lutsky, and he can address what he's seeing as far as the assessed value in the city. Um, as you know, property taxes is a significant generator of income for the city. And over the years, uh, property taxes uh, you know, there's been a, um, an element of increase in property taxes, but outside of revaluation, um, you know, property taxes stays uh, relatively flat, uh, particularly if we hold the, the tax rate within the city flat, and we have been doing that. So you might ask, well, how, how does property taxes then influence um, our revenue stream? Well, it's largely through new construction. Um, when, when companies build uh, plants in town or there's expansion of retail space, that adds really to our, our base in terms of income. And over the years, we've, our average change in assessed value, uh, for example, for the previous eight years was $32 million. And that $32 million trans translates roughly into you know, somewhere between a quarter of a million and $300,000 each year. And that's kind of like new money. And then, and the reason it's important is that money, of course, helps offset inflationary costs, uh, increases in wages, that type of thing. In 2009, our anticipated change in assessed value is 11 million. And then in 2010, the estimated change in assessed value is a negative $2 million. So that additional revenue that the city used to bring in as a result of these new improvements really is not there as it has been in the past. And I haven't gone back, you know, 
real far, but I would imagine that this has not happened very often. It may be the first time in the history of Sheboygan that the number has actually been negative. Now, with all this said, I want to make certain that uh, everyone in this room understands that the assessor's office doesn't make predictions of the future. We're really just a reflection of the past. However, sometimes for budgetary reasons, you know, we have to do an estimate. And this is one of the, the cases in which we need to do that. So I'm really was asked to come here to just let folks know that um, you know the tax rate being held constant and and it has been actually going down for many many years um, the increases in revenue that offset some of these uh, annual expenses is a result of new construction not revaluation and we do do revaluations but that's really not a part of it revaluation is more about uh, uh, uniformity in assessment not in equity of assessment Sorry, I didn't have my mic on. Um, I'll repeat that uh, there is a two-minute limit. Uh, please, let's everybody keep it civil. Uh, if, you, uh, if you step over the line and any one of the committee members here feels you have, they will call point of order. And uh, once point of order is called, uh, your time speaking will have ended. So if we can uh, have the list and we can begin. Where is the, is the list over on the... Okay, first... No, that's not the list. The list is over. <laughs> you speaking first, Scott? I believe it's on the table, right? There. Uh, look at that, Corey. Uh, first up uh, speaking, we have uh, Dulcie Johnson. And Dulcie, if we can have your uh, name and address, please. Yes, Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Ms. Johnson, you will have two minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> As we've heard, the city is dealing with a $2 million shortfall for next year's budget, and we know that wages and benefits make up 85% of that budget. Many city residents have lost their jobs, many live on fixed incomes, some have lost their homes, many have lost a lot of their savings in the economic downturn. Excuse me? It was two minutes. That was only one. <laughs> I don't think that was, that was probably 15 <laughs> seconds. Beg your pardon, Mr. Johnson, continue. Thank you. <laughs> Mic's on. Is the mic on? Okay. Pardon? Can't hear. Do I start Would over? Would you like to begin again? <clears throat> Thank you. you. As we've heard, the city is dealing with a $2 million shortfall for next year's budget, and we know that wages and benefits make up 85% of that budget. Many city residents have lost their jobs, many live on fixed incomes, some have lost their homes, many have lost a lot of their savings in the economic downturn. Half of the city employees do not live in the city, so do not contribute to the high cost of their wages and benefits. Let us consider the memorandum of agreement with the fire department paramedics. Up to 24 paramedics receive premium pay of 3% on January 1st and another 3% in pre premium pay on December 31st, in addition to the 3% increase for all firemen on January 1st and a 1.5% increase for all firemen on July 1st. That's a total of 10.5% increase for up to 24 paramedic firemen and a 4.5% increase for all firemen. I'm having a hard time understanding how the council could approve this even in good economic times. Mayor Ryan ran on a platform of running the city like a business. My son works in the Chicago area for a national company headquartered in Chicago. For 2009, they received no pay increases, no bonuses, no contributions to their 401ks. They pay half the cost of their health insurance premiums, a $10 copay for visits to a, to a general physician, and $15 for a visit to a specialist. And this is just one example, I am sure, of many of what's happening in the real world, and an example of what needs to happen in this city. 
union leaders and employees need to get real and city employees need to live in the city and help pay the price of their high wages and benefits. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dulcie. Uh, next up, we will have uh, Lee Montemayor. Thank you. Oh, 1015 Logan. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me start out that I'm totally uh, against some of the, the way this thing has been done. We don't negotiate contracts through the media or the newspaper, uh, radios, blah, blah, blah. We do have a, what I want to do is do it legally. There's got to be a process followed when we negotiate contract, especially when you're going to reopen the contract from 2009. You're supposed to be work, working on 2010. All you have to do is look at the codes two, sections 2-901 to 2907. It gives you a process of how it's going to be done. My second thing is there's, there is a document out there that was done on 4809 where they took the 125,000 water abatement program away from the 2000 event, and it didn't pass. It needs two-thirds uh, council <coughs> approval, and they only received 10. That document needs to be redone so it's legal. Here again, I state, I'm all for saving money, but I want it done legally. Okay, and I asked Terry to look in, to look at this in it, and you, you can find it in the analysis of the budget that we turn into the state every year on the 1231 of each year. So Terry is going to look at it soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montemayor. Um, just just commenting, uh, this is not a, a an, an open negotiation here. We're not negotiating here tonight. Um, if we are going to reopen any uh, contracts, the, the, the contract for 2009 be a letter, uh, uh, a, a letter of intent uh, to convene impact negotiations regarding any thing in the 2009 contract. It will be done legally. That has not been done at this point, and this is not a negotiation. Next up, we have uh, Rich Jordan. Sixteen, sixteen, Black Walnut. Mayor Ryan and committee member, this will be very short. I just want to remind you during the negotiations, I think that an important priority consideration should be in the insurance cost. You need to do careful shopping for deductibles and co-pays. I suggest uh, cutting the government contribution from 90% to 75% would be a good start in that manner. And just remember that if Sheboygan doesn't have any money left for operational expenses, then there isn't any need for our employees. And I hope we can keep all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Next up, we have uh, Richard Hartman. My address is 2423 North 23rd Street. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. My, what I have to say is going to be slightly different than uh, what you've heard, and it consists of this. Alderman Gisha invites everyone to this meeting because by his words, there is a way every citizen can help. I don't know what the average, how the average citizen can help unless it's to support the proposals that have been talked about recently. And I certainly do support that. If a citizen is here to simply become informed, that may be a step in the right direction. But no matter how well informed one may be, no matter how informed one may one may be, unless that newfound knowledge is put to work, nothing is contributed to the solving, pro solving of the problem. Without a doubt, there are bigger
try than the seemingly petty idea I come to suggest. But it too is a step in the right direction, and if adhered to, will contribute to correcting the problem. I might also add that its institution creates no unpleasantries to any parties involved. It is simply printing documents using both sides of a sheet of paper. Printing on both sides of a sheet of paper is nothing new. Look at your newspaper, magazine, or your favorite novel for everyday reminders of how widely it is accepted. I have printed copies of my presentation this evening to be given as handouts, and on the reverse side of each copy, you will find a print, you will find print from a multi-page document generated by either the city of Sheboygan, the Sheboygan Area School District, District, or the county of Sheboygan that was left blank, only to be continued on the next sheet of page paper, which was also left blank. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hartman. And uh, last on the list is uh, Ernest Mike Kepler. Twenty-five thirty-three Lakeshore Drive, Sheboygan. Thank you. I do not have prepared remarks tonight, but I would like to say the following. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, city leadership and the uh, labor management people for getting together and sincerely wanting to discuss these issues. Our costs have risen the last decade or two tremendously, and we need to address this. I would hope that uh, we look at it in a very positive way and reduce costs. Uh, I would suggest that uh, since 85% of the city's costs are, are salaries and wages and benefits, that these be approached and that these, the attitude be taken that it should mirror what is happening in the private sector. Uh, for example, for myself, if and I are both retired, our health insurance costs per year out of pocket are $8,200. That includes Medicare, supplemental, and everything. And I'm also paying for the public employees, both state, local, and uh, we can do more with the local because we're here tonight and that's what we can address. So I, thank you. I wish the committee good luck and goodwill, and please be sincere and honest in your efforts and be positive in your approach. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Capitello has also uh, requested to uh, speak. Sixteen nineteen North Thirty Eighth Street. That's the town of Sheboygan. I also believe that uh, the collective bargaining units and the city know the situation that we're in, and, and I have full confidence that we have very qualified individuals in both areas. And I think they'll do a good job and I think they'll do the best for the taxpayer for the city of Sheboygan. Besides that, I think also what you have to look at is I know that you reduced a lot of the capital improvement projects because of the, the budget situation the way it is right now. A anybody in this city can tell you that the roads are deteriorating, storm and sewer, water. My suggestion to the council is I know you want to work with the county, and this is an avenue that you might be able to do it. Milwaukee County just did it in this last election. They added a half of a percent uh, sales tax for some of the things that they were looking that they needed to do within their budget. I would suggest that to be able to do more of the capital improvements, to look at a possible half of a percent increase in the sales tax with the county, which you would have to do because it, the county would have to be able to collect that and do that. I would suggest that because the taxpayers right now, the property owners are pretty much at their point that they cannot afford any more taxes at all. And if you're looking at having 
everybody pay for the use of the roads. For example, if you're looking, if, if you have people coming to Blue Harbor, they're going to pay for part of the roads, part of the improvements, because they're paying part of that sales tax. And it would be for the property only because now you're reducing that from their expense where they would not have to pay the enormous expense that they would have to put when you do improvements within their areas. So I would suggest that the uh, city either do it by committee or directly uh, uh, Mayor Ryan with uh, 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 Adam Payne to get together to, to look and do some analysis of how much money could be generated for that and to do that. And that's not going to be a tax increase for property taxes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Capitello. That is all for our uh, public input session. I thank everybody for speaking, and, and thank you very much for uh, uh, conducting yourselves in the most uh, professional manner. We now have uh, comments by any alder persons or department heads who may want to uh, have any input on this issue. Do we have any input? OK. And we have comments by committee members. Any members of the committee that would like to speak on this issue? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Bauck. Thank you. Uh, as the chairman of Salary and Grievance, I just want everybody to know our friends uh, from the bargaining units as well. This is the book I'm going to use as my playbook as, as I help lead these negotiations. It's a negotiations classic. It's called Getting the Yes, and it's by some guys named Fisher and Yuri. You can Google it. You can Amazon it for five or six bucks. So uh, if our friends in the bargaining unit are looking for what kind of tactics we're going to use and what, what, what our secret plans are, they're all right here. Uh, it's all about positive negotiation. It's all about finding ways that you focus on the interests and not positions. Because if we focus on positions, that's not a healthy way to negotiate. What is it you need? What is it you want? Uh, and what are your interests? And then find a way to negotiate in good faith in the interests of the taxpayers of Sheboygan and in the interests of the employees. So I just wanted to put that out there in case anybody wants to study it before we uh, get behind those secret closed doors. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Would anybody else like to speak? No? Okay, this is a nice meeting. Now it's called the Mayor's Closing Comments. Um, I am very confident that uh, we can come to agreements between the city and our labor organizations. I, I believe that we can go to the table um, with everybody's interests in mind. We all know the numbers. The numbers are out there today for a reason. Also this presentation uh, will be put out on the, on the city website, this PowerPoint, if anybody would like to uh, check it out there. Um, Terry Hansen and uh, Dave Lutsky stand behind their numbers, and they will be willing to answer any questions on how they derive to the, with these numbers. So we know what we're looking at. Uh, it's not a pretty picture, but it's not insurmountable. Uh, we have been working diligently trying to rework our insurance package. We have hired a, an insurance consultant to represent the city that is very knowledgeable in insurance and that does not have an interest in selling us an inflated package so he can make more money. He's, he's, he's getting consult, consulting fees. So he will uh, hopefully come up with, the, uh, with the, the best package for us and with several different options. And we will discuss those uh, in the open with our, our partners in labor, um, introduce those before we go into negotiations that everybody is knowledgeable of them and we, 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 we can have some agreements in principle before we ever get into negotiations, before we ever get behind closed doors. I've always believed myself, and uh, I kind of think out loud, I operate in the open, and, and anything that we can accomplish before we go behind closed doors, and we can do it in, in, in anybody's office or in my office, uh, it's, it's, it will make the, uh, the entire process uh, much more manageable, and, and the outcome probably better. So. I'm confident we can do it. I'm, I appreciate everybody coming this evening. And uh, we, 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 have a, uh, we have a challenge ahead of us, but uh, we also have a bright future ahead of us. If we can get through the next two years in this city, uh, then it's, uh, it's, it's good. we're going into uh, growth mode from there on out. So, but we have to get from here to there, and I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Thank you. We are adjourned.